Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. Welcome back to another episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. Today's question, somebody asks, uh, Dear Pastor, there's one issue I have with the new King James, and it's like fingernails on a chalkboard to me when I come across it, and that is the Hades or Sheol in place of hell. In my Nelson in KJV study Bible, it gives a description or a definition of Hades, and they make it sound a lot like purgatory. I've also seen all sorts of different teachings on Hades. Some Roman Catholic sites say that Hades is the Greek version of purgatory, so they claim purgatory is really in the Bible in many places. Others claim everyone goes to Hades after they die. Some people even say there are two sides of Hades, one good and one bad, and there are some that say that no one is in hell right now. I still struggle with this for a few reasons. The first is Luke 16, 23 and 24. The NKJV says Lazarus goes to Hades, in verse 23 and in verse 24, that he is tormented in this flame. To me, this sounds like hell. But the bigger issue I have is that for us confessional Lutherans, when we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, we say that Jesus descended into hell. We don't say that he went to Hades. Yet in Acts 2.31, the New King James has Peter quoting David as saying, He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. Now, maybe I'm too picky, or my OCD kicks into high gear. But to me, it seems that the KJV is closer to our Lutheran confessions than the NKJV. What's your take on Hades or hell? Any advice you have on how I can get this to stop bothering me and enjoy the NKJV as much as the KJV would be very helpful. All right. So I can help with this. Uh, and there's two things that are going to be helpful for you. The first is we need to fix the meaning of Sheol and its translation. And that will make the second task then of unburdening Sheol of all the false ideas surrounding it much easier. So Sheol is the proper name in Hebrew for um, the underworld, the, 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 where the souls of wicked men go upon death. The Septuagint then the chief Greek translation of the Old Testament generally translates Sheol as Hades. And then hell is the English translation of Hades. And so this means that either translation, Hades or hell, or the transliteration, Sheol, is perfectly fine. That they are all acceptable ways to render the word in English. Uh, and it's, they're all the same thing. So, so you can tell your OCD to calm down. Uh, about as to whether Christ descended into hell or into Hades. They're the same thing. Now let's look at what the Old Testament especially says about Sheol, and this will demonstrate this for us. Uh, so first, uh, the Old Testament describes Sheol as dark. It's a silent place of captivity with bars in Jonah 2.6 and gates in Isaiah 38.10. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 22 calls it the lowest point on earth. And in Isaiah 9, verse 2, you have to dig to get there. Now, this uh, has led some Roman Catholic theologians to imagine that it is uh, in the center of the earth. Uh, it's associated with worms, maggots, and dust in Job uh, 17, 16, and Isaiah 14, 11. Uh, in Psalm 139, 8, it's the opposite of heaven. It's where the wicked go upon death. And we see this then in Numbers 16.33, because Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and all those who were with them went down alive into the pit, literally into Sheol. Now, there are other times then when the word Sheol has a bit different nuance to it. So of the 66 occurrences of the word in the Old Testament, the King James Version only translates it as hell 31 times the same number of times that it translates the word as the grave. KJV also translates the word as pit three times and as depth once. That's Isaiah 7.11. And the KJV does this because Sheol doesn't always mean hell as the place of the damned. Sometimes Sheol is the pangs of hell, the distress of hell that comes upon believers when they're suffering in this life. So Psalm 18, verse 5, David says, The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. Uh, Psalm 116, 3, The pains of death surrounded me, and the pangs of Sheol laid hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. And then Jonah 2, 2, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. He answered me, Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, 
and you heard my voice. So when used like this, then, uh, when used with this nuance, we see that it's used by believers who are expressing themselves to God in the midst of deep affliction, deep suffering, and agony of conscience and soul. And so that is to suffer the pangs of hell, or the pangs of Sheol. Now still, at other times then, uh, it seems to mean death itself. That is the act of passing away. So Jacob tells his sons in Genesis 49 29, If you take this one, Benjamin, from me also, and calamity befalls him, you shall bring down my gray hair, my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Literally, to Sheol. So that is, if anything happens to Benjamin, it'll be the death of me. The psalmist says in Psalm 88, 3, For my soul is full of trouble, and my life draws near to the grave. Again, to Sheol. Uh, Hezekiah uh, praised this in Isaiah 38, 10. In the prime of my life, I shall go down to the gates of Sheol. I am deprived of the remainder of my years. And Job 14, 13. Oh, that you would hide me in the grave. Literally, Sheol that you would conceal me until your wrath is past, that you would appoint for me a set time and remember me. So, then Christ experienced the pangs of hell uh, while suffering upon the cross. He also then, after burial, was, or he did, after burial, descend into hell, where he conquered the devil, destroyed the power of hell, and took from the devil all of his might. So Christ's suffering, the totality of God's wrath upon the cross, and his descent into hell, that's what fulfills David's words in Psalm 16, 10, you will not leave my soul in Sheol, or Hades, or hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. All right, now that we, uh, now we can look at what Sheol, or hell, or Hades isn't. Now your reading of the passage in Luke 16, the rich man and Lazarus, uh, the way that you read it is actually close to how Roman Catholicism reads the passage. Uh, the Roman Catholic Catechism, paragraph 633, says this. Scripture calls the abode of the dead, to which the dead Christ went down, hell. Sheol in Hebrew or Hades in Greek, because those who are there are deprived of the vision of God. Such is the case for all the dead, whether evil or righteous, while they await the Redeemer. Which does not mean that their lot is identical as Jesus shows with the parable of the poor man Lazarus, who was received into Abraham's bosom. It is precisely these holy souls who awaited their Savior in Abraham's bosom, whom Christ the Lord delivered when he descended into hell. Jesus did not descend into hell to deliver the damned, nor to destroy the hell of damnation, but to free the just who had gone before him. Now that definition covers several of the different views that you've read on Sheol. So in the Roman Catholic system, Old Testament believers went to Sheol, uh, not to suffer, but simply to await Christ's descent into hell. And then when Christ descended into hell, he would lead them out of hell into heaven. Now this is known as the harrowing of hell. Um, and several uh, Roman theologians in the past have read the rich man and Lazarus then as confirmation of this place. They call it the limbo of the fathers. It's a suburb of, the, of hell. Um, and they do this like, since the rich man could see uh, Lazarus in Abraham's bosom afar off. But this interpretation reads a lot into Jesus' words that isn't there. And it also changes the meaning of the account entirely. So Lazarus dies, and the angels carry him, not to Hades, but to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man dies, is buried, and is in the torments of hell, Hades in Greek. And Jesus doesn't say that these are different regions of the same place. Rather, they're different places entirely. It's also important to notice or, and to observe that if the rich man goes immediately into torment, but the Lord delays the godly man's entry into paradise, then God's severity in damning the ungodly is far greater than his kindness in glorifying the godly. But a plain reading of the text, uh, a plain reading of the text instead leads us to say with St. Augustine that the bosom of Abraham, uh, that is, the abode of a certain secluded rest, is not to be believed as a, a part of hell. So when we consider everything that the Old Testament says about Sheol or Hades, uh, it becomes all the more apparent that the rich man and Lazarus aren't in the same place after death. 
considering that Lazarus is comforted while the rich man is tormented in flame. So no, Sheol isn't purgatory light. It, it's hell. It's Hades. It's the place to which the souls of the wicked descend at the time of death. The place to which our Lord Jesus Christ descended, so that he might conquer the devil, destroy the power of hell, and take from the devil all his might. Therefore, neither hell nor the devil can, cap uh, can take captive or injure us and all who believe in Christ. I hope this helps. We'll see you next time for another episode of ATP. Ask the Pastor.